Last time we looked at a problem in which we had a square loop and we calculated the magnetic field due to the current flowing in that square loop right at the center. But this time we're going to do something more interesting and a little bit more difficult and challenging. We are going to recalculate the magnetic field due to the square loop but not on the center but at a point which lies on the axis of that square loop. Alright, so it's going to be a little bit off center. Yay! More fun. Let's do that. So here's the setup. We have a square loop as told earlier and let's say that square loop has a length of, let's call it as A. We need to calculate the magnetic field at this point and imagine this line passes through the center. Okay, so this point over here is just the center. Let's gonna call it as O. We need to calculate the magnetic field at this point. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to use the same formula as we've been using for quite a while now. And that formula is the same thing, the magnetic field due to a long wire. So let me rewrite that formula over here. It's just mu naught by 4 pi into I by A into sine alpha plus sine beta. So we're going to use the same formula that we used before. So let me start with BC because that's going to be very easy to represent. So let me drop a perpendicular from P on to BC first. That's going to be this perpendicular distance, okay? That's going to represent my distance A. Uh, since A is already used over here, I'm going to use a different variable. Let's call this as R. Alright, so let's call this as R. Alright, so let me drop a perpendicular from here to there. So let's see. Alright, so I'm going to drop a perpendicular from here all the way over here. All right, okay, that's our perpendicular. And that distance, I'm gonna call that as R. Now, pay attention. Since this point P lies on the axis, I hope you agree with me that this perpendicular must lie on the bisector of B and C. In other words, this point over here, whatever this point is, let me call that point as, say, let me, let me rub that I, it's written over here. Let me just, oh, let me just get rid of that I. We call that I is over here. Oh, okay, this is I, all right? Let's come back over here. Let me call that particular point as something. Let's say that is a PQ. Let's call it as Q, okay? Now, Q has to be the midpoint of B and C. Try to convince yourself of that because regardless of where you take your point P to be on the axis, if you drop a perpendicular, it will be on the midpoint of this. That's the symmetry argument we can say or something like that, okay? Just convince yourself of that. All right, and now we also need to we also need to draw two more lines from the from the endpoints, from the edges of this line. So, two more lines. So this thing is gonna get look a little bit messy now. So, try to follow me. So one line from here all the way to here, another line from here. So let me draw that in solid. I want to draw everything dotted. So here is one that one more line. One more line is gonna be somewhere over here. All right, and my angles alpha and beta are going to be these ones, all right? I'm not gonna write them, but these are the ones are going to be. Okay, <clears throat> so the magnetic field due to this line, so magnetic field, I'm gonna, I'm gonna calculate only due to BC, all right? At point P is going to be equal to this formula, it's going to be mu naught into I divided by four pi times R, this distance R, multiplied by sine alpha plus sine beta. And uh, from symmetry, I, I think you can see the two angles are going to be exactly the same. I'm just gonna call them as two times sine alpha. And our goal now is to calculate these two things. What is R and what is sine alpha? Now R can be calculated if you concentrate on the triangle OPQ. If you look at this triangle, you can clearly see that R square, so I'm gonna write that over here, R square, has to be equal to Pythagoras z squared plus oq squared, which is just half of the length. So a by two whole square, so a squared by four. And from that, I know what r is now. r is just z squared plus a squared by four. All right, almost done. Now I need to calculate what sine alpha is. Mm, this is really interesting, okay? Now look at this, this is a right angle, and this triangle, if you see this angle PQC, it's actually a right angle triangle, but the plane of that right angle is not in the plane that, that I'm showing you, okay? So 
It's a little bit imagination is needed. It's a little bit perspective is needed, all right? But that is a right angle triangle. So if you want to calculate what this angle is, this angle over here, then you can just go for sine, all right? Now to get that, I need to know what the opposite side is. So that's CQ, that's, that's half the length that we know. But I also have to calculate now PC. Do you see that? PC, but PC is the hypotenuse of this triangle, this right triangle. And so I can now calculate what PC is. So PC squared, or PC has to be equal to square root of um, this square, and this distance we just calculated, this is the R square, that is this one, it's R square, plus A by two whole square, so that's A squared by four, right? I hope you have not, I have, <laughs> you have not lost. So PC is going to be the square root of R square, which is this guy, squared, so Z squared plus A squared by four, plus an additional a squared by four, okay? This guy is r squared, right? You add another a squared by four to that, and we are going to get this to be equal to z squared plus, these two guys add up to give you a squared by two. All right? And from that now, we can calculate what sine alpha is. Sine alpha, is just going to be the opposite side, CQ, that is just A by two, divided by the hypotenuse in this triangle, that is PC, and this guy over here, All right? So Z square plus A square divided by two. All right, fine. Okay, let's get back to our equation. So magnetic field now is going to be equal to mu naught I divided by four pi, you know what R is? I'm, I'm, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna substitute that later, okay? So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna keep it as it is, all right? So let's not substitute now and mess things up. So I, I now I understand what is the magnetic field due to one part of my square loop. Okay, so now that we know the magnetic field due to one part, maybe you are, you are going to say now the magnetic field due to all the four parts together should be just the addition, isn't it? All right, so I think you're gonna say that the total magnetic field, the total magnetic field, B total, is just going to be four times the magnetic field that we calculate over here. Isn't that right? Isn't it? Well, no, it isn't. And I want you to pause the video for a while and try to figure out yourself why it isn't. So please feel free to pause the video at this moment and try to understand why the total magnetic field won't be just equal to four times the magnetic field due to each part of the loop. I mean, that's what we did last time. Well, last time, if you remember, I, I always calculated the direction of the magnetic field. Last time, the direction of the magnetic field due to each one was exactly the same. Well, this time, unfortunately, look at the direction. The direction is given by, remember, the direction of the magnetic field is either taken by the right-hand rule, but I think right-hand rule is going to be a little bit, a little bit out of our, out of our domains now because you know we have all these crazy angles and everything. But the best way to get the direction of the magnetic field is so the direction of the magnetic field is of the same direction as dl cross r, where dl has the direction of the current and r has the direction of the radius vector, the distance from this point all the way to that point. All right. So look over here, here is your DL vector. Okay, can you see that? DL vector is this way. DL vector is actually running into the screen. And here is your R vector. So if you do DL cross R, you're now going to get a magnetic field that is perpendicular to R. You have to use your DL cross R. You have to angle, <laughs> you have to angle your hand right. And if you do that, you will now see that the magnetic field actually runs in this direction. This will be the direction of the magnetic field B. I should have used blue for that. This is going to be your B. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be nice to you. I'm gonna draw one more triangle. So I'm gonna redraw that triangle over there. So here is OP. And then we have our dotted line, which is um, PQ. So here is PQ. Oops, supposed to be with white. All right, so here is PQ. Okay, so the the vector, DL vector actually runs into the screen. So it's into the screen here. And R vector runs this way. And because of that, if you do a DL cross R, you'll now see that the magnetic field runs in this direction. 
okay so let me just delete this unwanted stuff make room for things which is important all right and that is problematic for us because the magnetic field due to all the others are not going to be in this direction in fact if you work this out now if you work it out for da you will see the magnetic field will be exactly in this direction now okay it will not be 90 degrees but it will be symmetric on the opposite side and therefore what matters now is not the entire magnetic field but the component of the magnetic field along the axis that's all that matters this component i'm going to call it as b dash is what matters because it's that component that's going to get added up i hope you can see if you were to calculate the magnetic field of da and add it with the magnetic field over here the two magnetic field would add up in this direction in fact this component is going to cancel out please convince yourself of that i know it's a lot to ask from you but this analysis is required okay it's deep vectors it's a very challenging problem over here all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to calculate the component in this direction and trust me if you get that component then we can add, multiply that by four and we will have the answer so let's call this angle as theta and then the required the required magnetic field is the required field that the field we are interested in is going to be b cos theta but do we know what theta is yes we can calculate because if this is theta this is 90 minus theta because this is 90 degrees and therefore this angle is theta i hope you can understand why this is 90 degrees because you know when you do dl cross r you're supposed to get perpendicular to r this is dl cross r right and therefore this is 90 and therefore we know what cos theta is cos theta is um uh, edges inside that is a by 2 divided by the hypotenuse which is just r a hey, wonderful now we can calculate what the total magnetic field due to one due to one side is that's going to be b which we calculate over here mu naught i by 4 pi r mu naught i by 4 pi r times sine alpha 2 times sine alpha so there's a 2 here multiplied by cos theta and that is a by 2 times r and one second this is supposed to be r okay that is the magnetic field due to one the component along the axis and that's all that's going to matter now the total magnetic field is going to be four times this value so the total field total field due to all the four wires all the four parts is going to be the total field the final value is just going to be four times this value so this four cancels and we're gonna get mu naught i two times sine alpha into a divided by 2 so 2 2 cancels this 2 goes out with this 2 so divide by pi r square and we know what sine alpha is that's from here that's here and we also know what r square is going to be that's from here and so if you substitute this we have the answer so there you have it I haven't written the final form, you can write that yourself, but I hope you were able to understand now this difficult problem, how you were able to solve it step by step. Now, I have one homework for you, and that is to solve a similar problem, but a much easier problem, okay? I'm, I'm gonna be nice to you, I'm gonna give you a much easier problem. So here's the homework. So the homework is going to be this, I'm gonna write down over here. Here is your homework. You have to recalculate whatever I did, but not for a square loop, but instead you have to do it for a circular loop yay what fun so imagine you have a circular loop like this so it's actually a circle not an oval but you're looking at it from the side and that's just like how that square was looking and so imagine that the oops and imagine that the current over here is i let's call the radius to be r then what i want you to do is go at a distance some distance okay some distance z from the axis put a point over there and calculate what the magnetic field is going to be i'm going to give you a clue and the clue is this is going to be way easier than what i did so you do the same thing what i did but you start with a very tiny section this time you know just like how i saw earlier problem tiny section you start with and then you take the component of the magnetic field along the axis and you integrate over the entire loop and don't worry just like how i summed it just like how i multiplied it four times you just have to integrate over the entire loop but that integral is going to be very easy super easy so it's going to be a test of whether you've understood this problem or not all right so there we have it see you next time